Hello guys, here's the video of trying to resurrect here in no MacBook Air 2010. The model is 1370 or basically MacBook 3, comma 1 as they refer to it. it basically I prepare a couple of species, a lot of patience, you need to download some images from Apple and it's how it's gonna work. And the other issues we have with this laptop particularly is we don't know uh, the um, administrator. All right, let's get to it. V8 1370 Air laptop. My sister's MacBook Air 2010 was bought back then with its base SSD at 64 gigabytes, which is currently crammed with stuff, games, programs, photos, and music. The latter two are easy to copy somewhere, but programs need settings, so simply copying is more cumbersome than using Apple's Time Machine backup. Now, getting the drive, we have to consider that there are certain controls limitation to the sizes compatible. So here I cannot use, for example, drive above 512 gigabytes. Otherwise, one terabyte would be ideal and a pretty long-term upgrade and a sweet spot in price. 64 to 512 is also pretty sizable, eight times more data. Additionally, here we have an update stall and the OS 10.6.8 Snow Leopard is long overdue, so we will use the opportunity to upgrade the software to the latest supported version, which after a slow check in online is 1036 High Sierra. For the backup, what we need is a bigger external hard drive, which we can connect over USB. And then we need a small USB flash drive. I had here around 16 GB for the OS images, booting and installs. As mentioned, resetting the password without losing any data here turns to be very straightforward, as the drive is not encrypted. And doing this takes only a few commands at boot imprompt. Restarting in recovery mode is exactly that as the user ends up in a console prompt. From there, with a set of commands, we are simply able to assign a new password to the user as a root access is being given by default. Overall, that is pretty flawed, but it's an early laptop, so good at this security hole works for us and not against. But it's a big security risk of an old system like this. If your computer lands in the hands of someone that wants your information, it's gonna be very easier to get to. That is exact command description I took from a website after a small search. Okay. Um, can I normally boot and have admin root in the case of a Unix system? The automatic OS upgrade does not work. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so nice, huh? Unfortunately, even this maker app for the latest Mac OS doesn't work here as well, so we first need to upgrade to an OS that will let us create a startup USB for the latest targeted High Sierra 1013. So we create a startup for El Capitan 1011 in order to put that on. Next thing is to conduct the... Waiting for it to boot now. And holding. Release now. And we should be landing in the console or the terminal, whatever you want to call it. So I simply start following the comments from the website. Like one by one tapping it in. It's quite simple. But it's just a simple file system check. And we're done. So we can reboot. A reboot. And there we see that this time we are prompted for a password at startup which was not the case before, but that's all right because now we know it. We're also now looking forward to install at least the updates for the current operating system to the level, typing the new password, we create it. Okay, checking the system version about the Mac. And we see it shows now 10.6.8, which is the latest over the air update or the included automatic update for this configuration. And now our drive maker for the El Capitan 10.11 is already compatible 
and we will be able to create the USB drive for its installation. What we keep noticing is with every update, the laptop gets again slower and slower as the system gets bigger and bigger. Okay, finally done. Let's now see your iMac is being configured, but that's of course not an iMac. Anyway, we have a 10.11.8 Now this starts to look a little better and there we have the High Sierra 10.13.6 there's still no full-size laptop with 3mm minimum height, even on one of the sides. And there is our M2 drive connected to the blade adapter. When you see the drive itself, it's much smaller than the adapter. It's actually pretty tiny. No one talked about Ultrabooks then yet. But there stood the mother and father of them all. Let's not lose focus, but start unscrewing the back by removing all the screws about a ten of them fit very easy to make to me still unparalleled in tasteful and minimalistic design is that what we call slick simplicity and a very bold statement overall which is what expected of apple your full size enter key very important for me Once we have it open, first thing we see, battery pack. And the flat cooling system here. Important is first, whatever this assembly, to disconnect the power connector. And do it very, very, very carefully because once you break a wire, you can render everything unrepairable or pretty expensive, not worth it to. Then we screw tiny screw there that holds the blade hard drive in place. Slowly pull upwards, ready to take out the drive, wiggling without any force, pulling to the side a little bit, there it is, out. Now let's see if our new construct fits, looks okay them side by side makes sense as you see the blade connector there and the thickness is of course a problem because this new drive is a little higher just because it sits in an adapter and the old drive is pretty flat but snaps in place it's not that tight in the air still Once we have the new disk in, now we're going to directly install the High Sierra operating system from USB. Which after you have prepared, it's pretty simple and easy to use by clicking next, next, next. The reason why we first upgraded the other hard drive is very simple, because we wanted to only have a backup of one operating system, which we're planning to use afterwards as an end operating system, but also having it compatible with the backed up material. There is back again. Beautiful. From a Mac and Time Machine backup, 
we're going to restore the whole system. It really is a one-click operation, actually. And there we see the 500 gigabytes disk fully operational. And the final result finally get everything going, big drive, and the new system. Final system. So, thanks for watching. Hope you can do it if you have an air at hand. It's it's kind of worth it, definitely, to revive if you need a computer like that at hand as a second one, or maybe just, it's still pretty usable hardware, actually. So, good luck.